Hold tight, James here from plumberparts.co.uk. Hope you can enjoy this video today, guys. Before we go right into it, oh, I've got a bit of a throw, as you can probably hear. Ugh. Um, but if possible, before we continue with this video today, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel, that's most important. Really happy that we just hit 50,000 subscribers and we're nearly at 14 million views, lucky YouTubers. So join our 50,000 subscribers and click that subscribe button now. Also, if you want to have a look down below in the links, we've got links to our Twitter and our Facebook. It's a really great way for you to get in contact with us if you've got any photos or any problems, anything you want to share with us, you can do that on our Twitter and Facebook pages. By the way, this is the start of really a series of videos about an installation of a ensuite that we've got going up behind us here. I'll show you the layout for the ensuite in a minute and then you'll get an idea about why we've drilled the holes in these joists where we have. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video and remember, there's one thing you're going to do. That's all time. Where's me brew? Where's me brew? Where's me brew? Brew, brew. Plumberparts.co.uk, home of Find Your Plumber. So what we're looking at today is how to install pipework inside timber joists. Now I had a look around on the interwebs about this and there's not really many great videos about it. Most of them are from America where the regs are slightly different uh, because there are regs that you need to think about when you're doing this sort of thing. If you want it crossed off by builder control, they're gonna come out and have a look at it and they're gonna wanna see that your pipework's been installed properly. It might sound a bit mad that drilling a hole in a bit of seven by two timber or something like that needs regulations, especially if you're only putting a 15 mil pipe through, but they are there and you do need to follow them if you wanna get this stuff signed off. So let's have a look at how to do it. Number one, the first thing I wanna say is this. If you're drilling a 22 millimeter pipe, say that's what you're first fixing, which is what we're gonna be doing here today. Uh, we're also gonna be running a little bit of 15 mil as well. If you're doing either of those two, I generally ear on the side of go at least four mil bigger than the pipe that you're fitting, hole size. So if you're fitting 15 millimeter pipe, then it's a good idea if you can find a 19 millimeter hole saw minimum, really. The reason for this is really because of ease of use. Uh, so when you've drilled all your holes, you can pull your pipe through real easy and it'll go in. And not clagging on the hole because it's too small. Also another reason, if the pipe's getting hot and cold a lot, you don't want that to be rubbing on any of the timber. That needs to have a nice even way of being able to move forward and backwards as it contracts and expands. That's another reason as well. Leave your hole a little bit bigger than it needs to be. Don't worry if you've done this properly, if you've worked out your calculations properly, drilling a larger hole isn't gonna structurally affect the building uh, in any way whatsoever, so don't worry about that. So watch me now, I'm gonna show you how to measure out the timber, and then basically we're just gonna wang some holes in, and then in our next video in this series, we're gonna show you all about first fixing. So let's give you an idea about actually where we're going. We've got our joists going across like that, and this is the general shape of the room at the moment. Now, our main services are coming from the house, from the extension through here, which is that joist just up there. Now, above stairs, there's gonna be a radiator here and also a radiator here under the window. This is partitioned off upstairs because we're gonna have a loo here, a shower there, and a basin here, which brings us on to the next bit. We're also gonna have a hot and cold. So the first thing we need to think about is getting our flow return in for our radiators across here and here, and there, and then these will tee out like that. Then also we need to get our hot and cold in over here. So now I'm gonna measure out exactly where we need to put our holes in the joists. So then the first thing you wanna do is we need to make sure that where our holes are being drilled are in line with regulations. And so the first thing I wanna do is basically measure that out, okay? It does sound a little bit much, and you know, sometimes I'm kind of half inclined to agree with you, but it's one of those things, you have gotta go by the rules of the land. So we're just gonna do that now, measure the span of this and get our center. Then if you look at this diagram here, because we're drilling holes in the joist itself, we're not notching in, uh, we have to come out a quarter of the span before we drill any holes. So on this, that is oh, 75. Because I'm gonna run my pipes down this side here, we're gonna be going in, grouping in with these here, but we can drill this so it's all within regs and I'm totally fine. So, so a quarter of the span here, and we can't go out any further than 0.4 of the whole span. That means we're gonna be about here. Now, because we've already got wires and bits and pieces going through this area already, that means I now know that my span area that I can drill in is basically there. So obviously, as you can see here, we've got the services here, the electrical services here. This particular span here is what I've earmarked for our pipes. 25% mark is there, 
and our 40% mark is here, so we know we can drill within this part of this span. Then the whole size I'm gonna draw, uh, all we're gonna run through here are two pipes. We've got our flow and return from our radiators there. Uh, so this is gonna be a 35 mil and a 35 mil. To work out what maximum size hole you can drill, you time 0.25 by the actual millimeter span of this. And that actually means that the maximum hole size we can drill in this is 44 millimeters on this because it's a seven inch joist. So next up is pretty much a choose your weapon moment. And my favorite bit personally, um, got my 32 mil bit here. Uh, and I use an angled drill like this. Obviously the great thing about these is they are narrow enough and they've got a bit on them to fit up into a joist and do your drilling. If you haven't got one of these, it's not gonna be that easy this particular job. But there we go, quick lesson for you too. If you've got your apprentice on site, make sure he does this when he's finished with the chuck key. Look, put it in there. That saves you loads of time. I mean, this is real basic stuff here, but if you are using an electric drill like what I've got here, make sure you obviously wear all the PPE, personal protective equipment that you've got, but also it helps to just pull out a little bit of extension lead. And then if it's a wired one, if you're not using a combi drill, you know, like a, like a battery drill, you hang that on your steps and then you know you can walk up and down without having to pull your lead out constantly. It's just gonna follow you up and down like that, okay? So right, what I'm gonna do now, and now I know exactly where I need to mark them on the joist because we've got that layout there that we need to follow. Uh, we are now gonna basically mark each one of them out. I'm gonna mark them at 41 inches and 45 inches away from the wall. That way I know they'll be straight all the way down and then basically halfway through the joist. Remember, the one thing you've got to do as well is wear protective clothing. Don't get any of that stuff in your eyes. I had a morning at the local A&E once and they're trying to get a little bit of metal out of my eye, okay? Uh, I was there at four in the morning and for some reason, this random teenage couple, four o'clock in the morning on a Monday night, decided they were gonna get off with each other and basically eat each other's faces in the middle of A&E, which is a bit weird. Anyway, let's get on with this. <laughs> Are you guys ready to drill some timber free? Let me hear ya. Get your drill bits ready, get your drills ready. Damn sharper, let's go. Oh, come on. Right, at this point here, it's worth noting that we're gonna be having 22 mil flow and return coming up to this cavity here, because what we're doing, having one radiator under the window just above us here, and then after that, we don't need to run 22 mil pipe onto the next rad, because we're feeding another radiator in the front room just downstairs on a drop down leg. So what we do there is in this cavity here, we're gonna reduce the pipe work down to 15 mil from 22 mil for this radiator here and that radiator there, which means that the next hole here, we don't need to make so big, okay? That's what I'm saying. Also, as you probably noticed, we've got one stud here, then we've got three studs like right next to each other here, and secondly as well, because this one lines up into that stud there, we're just gonna move these and shuffle them over into this cavity here, just like that, okay? Nice and easy, no troubles whatsoever. Just means I've gotta get down off the steps and change my drill bit so it's the right size. Also, just so you know, have a look at how damn good this drill is. Ooh. Right, so up here now, we've reached this cavity here, which is where our uh, flow and return for the heating system comes in. Like I said, we've popped the holes ready for our 22 mil to come down here for the two radiators at this end. We've only got one radiator going off at the back, so our main 22 mil T is gonna be up in that cavity there. So all we need to do to the back is run that over as if we're putting 15 mil pipe work in. I mean, the rule of thumb is you don't try and run uh, more than three radiators on 15 mil, but even I'd say that's kind of pushing your luck a little bit. Um, try and keep it so only two rads come off 15 mil uh, at the most, and then when you're first fixing, when you're doing it, you can make sure then that you won't have any problems with balancing the heating system later on. Uh, so I'm gonna do that all now. I'm just gonna punch them down there, and then basically we're gonna measure our bits across there to go in there with that as well. Along with that lot in there, we're gonna put our uh, hot and cold in that particular side of the cavity as well. Uh, right, so I'm gonna measure these out now and just carry on drinking. Brilliant. Enjoy. I'm drilling, drilling, drilling holes in the dust. 
think you're too much To stick it out my dream is dreamy wind The hot and cold, the hot and cold The flow and return, the flow and return The hot and cold, the hot and cold The flow and return, I'm getting it out, come out! Well, anyway, you guys get the gist there about what's going on. It's all about measuring out, making sure that your holes are pretty much straight in line with each other, making sure that then when you pull everything through, not only does it come and pull through easily, it doesn't kink any of the pipe that you're pulling through or anything like that, but also it ensures that there's no like sort of squeaky noises or anything like that as the pipe gets hot and cold in the future. The next video that we're going to be doing in this series is actually putting the pipes through, showing you how they're installed uh, and how we actually fit them in uh, or how we leave the stub sticking out because you know a lot of the time when you're doing this sort of job you can't just throw all the pipe work in and connect it straight up to the heating system straight away. Other trades need to do their little bit first and that's definitely going to happen here because we need to pop off main flow and returns just through that wall there and then there's a staircase that's got to be moved, that sort of thing. It means that this series isn't going to be one after the other through the Plumber Parts channel. It will just be as and when we know that we can film the next side of the job. But hopefully it won't be very long before we can actually show you the first fixing of the pipes in here, uh, showing you how we pull them through, why we stick them up where we do, and then how to cover them up so they're nice and safe while the rest of the trades do their bit. Later on, you'll be able to second fix and make sure that there's no problems with the pipes. Anyway, I hope this video has given you a bit of a better idea about how to actually do this job, how to measure out the timbers, how to know that you're within regs, how to make sure that they're all in line, and you know how to choose the right size drill bit. Let's face it, you're not gonna be getting a 15 mil drill bit for 15 mil pipe, are you? Otherwise, you're gonna be there all day and you're gonna be muscle man by the end of it. You know what I'm saying, bruv? Anyway, guys, I hope you have a great day. I hope you subscribe to our videos, follow us on Twitter and Facebook, and remember to hold tight. <coughs> ah, maybe I should have wore a face mask as well. Plumberparts.co.uk, home of Find Your Plumber. God, I can't believe it. I've never scrubbed the big fat G on his belly.